Hey guys, in this video, I want to compare the Sony a7 III against the Canon R6 and find out which is the better camera for photography, the newer Canon R6 or the much loved Sony a7 III. Personally, I use the Canon R6 for all my professional work, photography and video, but I was very close to buying the Sony a7 III for the past 18 months or so before the R6 was announced. So did I make the right decision in sticking with Canon and buying the R6 or is the a7 III the better camera. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. I do just want to say I am a Canon user, so I might be a little bit biased towards Canon, but I'm going to try and be fair. I'm going to show you the specs and we're going to talk about my experience with street photography and yeah, discuss which one's better, Sony a7 III or the Canon A6. Let me know in the comments down below, do you shoot Con Coney? <laughs> Coney 2012. <laughs> Do you shoot Sony or do you shoot Canon? Leave a comment down below. Let's have an argument because people love camera brand debates. So which one do you think is better, Sony or Canon, without even watching this video yet? What are your thoughts? Let me know. First thing I want to say is I'm comparing a Sony, which is three years old, to almost a brand new Canon. So I would want to just give credit to Sony there, the fact that the a7 III is still being used to compare against a brand new Canon camera. So yeah, props to Sony for that. They have obviously been the leaders in mirrorless full frame cameras for a little bit, in my opinion. And Canon have only just started catching up with their R series. So this should be a good video and I'm interested to hear your opinions. I know I've already asked you to comment below, but the whole camera brand debate is everyone was talking about it. So I'm looking forward to getting started with this. As the video goes on, I'm going to add a little tally or pop up and I give a point to the camera that one ups the other camera. And then in theory, we should know by the end of the video, which has got more points, meaning that it's the better camera. So just a little bit of competition, but obviously this is all my opinion as well. I feel like I'm explaining myself here because I know people just get really opinionated about camera brands. So um, yeah, maybe I'm not ready for the backfire here, but we're going to give it a go anyway. So yeah, a little tally will pop up and I give a point to the camera that wins in that category. First, let's give some context on price. The Sony a7 III is sitting at around 1300 to 1500 pounds for the body and the Canon R6 is around 2300 to 2800 for the body. First category, let's talk about the sensor. The a7 III has a 24 megapixel sensor and the Canon R6 has a 20 megapixel sensor. Does the four megapixel difference really matter? If we're blowing these photos up on a giant billboard, then maybe this Sony is gonna come out on top. But in my experience, I'll show you a few photos on screen, some Canon photos, some Sony a7 III photos. I can't tell, but with that being said, I posted a couple of Sony photos on my Instagram and one of my friends did tell me, wow, Mike, these photos are the most sharp photos I've ever seen you post. And I was thinking, interesting because it's the first time I've ever posted Sony images. However, I was using a different lens. I was using a Samyang 85mm. That might have had something to play. I'm going to say the Sony gets a point here because it has got four megapixels more than the Canon. Does it matter? I've not found that as a problem. I've never submitted work for anyone using the R6 and they've gone, oh no, the photos don't look sharp enough. The R6 does share the same sensor as the flagship 1DX models as well. They've only got 20, 20 megapixels. So I personally don't think 20 megapixels, I personally don't think 20 megapixels is a problem. The Sony does have four megapixels more, so let's give them a point, they win for that round. Next thing I wanna talk about is the autofocus. So Canon are pretty notorious for their dual megapixel autofocus. I've always been super impressed when I've been vlogging, when I've been filming, when I've been taking landscape photos, when I've been taking street photos, and especially with the R6 with the eye tracking. So obviously it's tracking my eye now while I'm filming, but even when I'm doing street photography, I've held up the camera to take a street portrait of someone as they're passing by, not really focused on getting the image, hit the shutter, and then got back and realized that the photo is perfectly focused. I'm thinking that wasn't even me really concentrating that was definitely the eye track the eye tracker on the camera doing that so I want to give a massive props to the Canon R6 for its focus because it is pretty unbelievable and it's difficult to say that it's a lot better than Sony because when I used Sony for a full day doing street photography the a7 III the focus was amazing anyway so I can't say anything bad about the focus on either the R6 or the a7 III but going by word of mouth things I've read online and people's opinion in general, may I dare I say it, I think the Canon is gonna take a point for that. I think the autofocus with Canon is better than the autofocus with Sony. So one point to Canon for that. I will quickly talk about Canon colors versus Sony colors. I don't really care about this because when I'm editing my images anyway, I'm gonna change some of the colors. As long as you keep skin tones correct, you can edit your photos how you want you can have your work looking however you want or however the client wants it. But color science, I don't care. What do you think? Leave a comment down below. Sony colors are more red magenta and Canon colors are more green orange. I don't care. 
Do you care? Now let's talk about the low light capabilities. Before I go into detail on this, there was a great article that I read from mirrorlesscomparison.com. I'll put it, link in the description and on screen so you can see what I'm talking about. They made a great article going into in-depth detail on low light, uh, more detail than I will ever be able to understand. So I just wanna shout those guys out. If you want a little bit more information on low light, you definitely need to read this article. Long story short, the Canon R6 came out on top and performed better in low light situations. Now, with most photography situations, you shouldn't really be in that harsh of a condition where you need to push the low light so dramatically but if you ever were in you know a mine somewhere and you needed to take a photo I think the Canon R6 is going to come out on top over the Sony but generally speaking even just night photography or if you're in a studio or wherever you are for your photography situations both of the cameras will perform well but I'm going to give a point to the Canon here for outperforming the Sony on low light situations but definitely read that article because I'm only getting this information from those guys I don't want you to think that I did all the experimenting and the um in-depth research because I just read this article and I was like, that's good information. I'm going to share it with you guys. So yeah, link in the description for a more in-depth understanding of low light with the Sony a7 III and the Canon R6. I will quickly mention both cameras have a five axis sensor image stabilization. I think I said that right. Yeah, I did say that right. I've been super impressed when shooting with the Canon in situations where I've needed to go to like 20th of a second, 30th of a second. So image stabilization with the R6 is brilliant, but I'm pretty sure it's almost the exact same on the a7 III. And the a7 III is is three years older than the R6. So both cameras provide great image stabilization. So any handheld shake, shouldn't really need to worry about it that much, but if you are freezing and shaking, then probably don't take the image. But generally speaking though, both cameras have great image stabilization. So neither of them get a point there. They're both probably very equal on that. This one is for the YouTubers out there that need a flip out screen because the a7 III doesn't have it, which is really annoying. And I think if the a7 III did have a flip out screen, I would have bought it when it came out two, three years ago, but instead, I held off because just the vertical up and down screen, not good enough. And if you watch my POVs, you know that I like to have my screen out when doing street photography. And photography in general, this isn't a major player, just use the viewfinder. But for me, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I'm just a typical YouTuber and I like having a flip out screen, but I just like having the screen to move where I want it to move. Um, and the Sony doesn't do that. So I'm gonna give a point to Canon on that. Whether that's actually better for photography or not, it probably doesn't matter, but this is my video, so I'm gonna give a point to Canon. The Sony a7 III can shoot up to 10 FPS on continuous drive. The Canon R6 can shoot up to 12 FPS or 20, excuse me, or 20 with an electronic shutter. So Canon have done amazing there with the tech. We're not shooting crazy sports or like rare wildlife where we need to just like spam out a million images every second. So I'm not really bothered about that, but tech wise, Canon beats Sony there. If you wanna shoot 20 frames, in a second, then you can do that, which is pretty impressive. Another point to Canon for that one. I know we're mainly just discussing photography here, but I will throw up the video specs for you. The a7 III doesn't perform as well as the Canon R6, but the a7 III came out three years ago, so I wouldn't expect anything less. But if you did care about video specs, the Canon is better than the a7 III a point to Canon once again. The R6 is a little bit bigger and heavier than the Sony a7 III. So specifically with my content and what I talk about on this YouTube channel is street photography, that is a con. So the Canon is 680 grams, I think, and the Sony is 650 grams, and the Sony is a little bit more small and compact. So point to Sony there. If you're out doing street photography, minimal and lightweight gear is definitely a pro. So yeah, a point to Sony there for having the smaller and lighter camera. I probably should just mention that both cameras have weather sealing ability or they're just good at keeping the weather out I'm wording this terribly but I think you get my point yeah if it's chucking it down you're in a storm and you want to take some photos you should be pretty good I've taken my R6 out in the rain once or twice not had any issues or been concerned and I've seen people shoot with the a7 III in just crazy conditions as well and no problems there. So both cameras work well in dodgy weather conditions. Let's talk about ease of use. Now, I said at the beginning, I'm a Canon user, so I, I am gonna be biased when I'm talking about this, but the Canon has three different dials, I think, which control the ISO, shutter, and aperture. I don't need to press any other buttons to access those either. I do think the customization and the controls on Canon cameras and the system itself is better than every other system that I've tried using. Like I said, that is biased opinion, so don't hate me for saying that. But when I did use a Sony a7 III for a full day, to access the ISO when I quickly wanted to change it, I had to press right on the little pad, then go into the ISO and change it. Whereas with the Canon R6, it's just one swipe of my thumb and I'm there. So personally, Canon better and easier to use than the Sony. Very biased, I know that, but I'm gonna give a point 
to Canon on ease of use. Both cameras have a dual SD card reader, so yeah, both, both doing good on that part. Neither of them get a point because that's just great that both of them do that. I upgraded my Canon R6 from an ATD, which is a crop sensor DSLR, very old camera, but legit one of the best cameras I've ever owned. That only had one SD card. That annoyed me. I filled it all the time. But yeah, with the R6 and the Sony both having dual slot readers, fantastic. Let's talk about battery life. Now, when I used a Sony for the full day with street photography, I think I started on 100% and ended on around 60%, 50%. Really impressed. I didn't need to change the battery once. However, when I do use the Canon R6, I definitely have to change the battery at least once during a day of photography. Now, with that being said, I'm normally filming, I'm normally vlogging. If I'm out doing street photography, I'm normally putting the Canon R6 through its paces by doing a lot of video stuff as well. But I did notice how good the Sony a7 III was with battery life. So a point to Sony for battery. Canon, can you just do better, please? Because I feel like I'm changing my batteries with my Canon cameras all the time. Like even now, I've been filming for 20 minutes. I started on 100%. I'm now on, I can see two bars gone. So I'm probably on 50-ish percent. So battery life, point to Sony. I'm definitely not the best person to be talking about tech, talking about specifications, giving you a really good review. I just wanted to make this video because I know people love the debate, the camera brand debate, which one's better, Sony or Canon? This is the part of the video where I tell you which camera had the most points there. I think Canon beat Sony by a couple of points from everything we've just mentioned. So I hope I've done my maths right and I've remembered everything I've said during this video. But I think Canon's won there. With that being said, Canon is more expensive. It's almost a thousand pounds more expensive. The lenses are more expensive. I think the RF lenses are more expensive. So generally speaking, the Canon ecosystem is more expensive than the Sony ecosystem. I think I could be totally wrong. The R6 body is definitely more expensive than the A7 III body. Let's wrap up everything I've just mentioned. Canon has beaten Sony, in my opinion, on photography. Which is the better camera? The R6. Does it matter? No. Are both cameras great? Yes. Have I probably just wasted 25 minutes filming this video to give you that very boring conclusion? Probably. I feel like I've been chatting a lot and this probably just doesn't make sense anymore. So I'm going to stop rambling on. Please hit that like button, click subscribe. If you want to support the YouTube channel, please do check out my presets over on my website. I think there might be some available to you for you to just click underneath this video. And I want to put this out there. I'm working on something big, something I mean, I'm only saying this because I imagine the people still watching my face right now are loyal subscribers that care remotely about what I'm doing. But I'm working on a project um, and I will share more information over the videos and on my Instagram, things like that. But it's a big deal for me. This is exciting. I don't want to say anything else because I want to make sure I finalize some parts before I give you more information. But it's sick. I'll be sharing more information. There's stuff happening. Yeah, that didn't make any sense, did it? Anyway, all right. See you in a bit. Peace.